Welcome to Hard Talk. I'm Stephen Sacker. The human preoccupation with sex is nothing new, but the internet has made it so much easier to explore and exploit every shade of desire. The online porn industry makes billions of dollars in profit every year, but the big winners are corporate players, not the women and men performing the sex acts. Well, my guest today, Mia Khalifa, was briefly a porn actress. She garnered worldwide notoriety when she appeared in a sex video wearing Islamic hijab. After years of threats and insecurity, she's now speaking out. What does her story tell us about the porn industry and 21st century culture? Mia Khalifa, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you for having me. By many measures, you are a very famous woman. For instance, you have, what, more than 16 million followers on Instagram. But the origins of your fame lie in your brief involvement in the porn industry. Is that hard for you to deal with? Absolutely. Um, after I left, I deleted my, well, I didn't delete my Instagram. It got hacked by ISIS sympathizers and propaganda was posted all over it. So Instagram took it down and I didn't recreate one for another year until I decided to kind of accept my fate as the infamous former porn star and try and change the narrative. So I recreated an Instagram account and tried to, for lack of a better term, become an influencer. Hmm. Cause if you put your name, as indeed I have done researching this, put your name into Google and... On course, the work network? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> it was work. But the point is, you get these countless uh, links to videos, the word porn star appears immediately. That, that is something that, that you will never, ever overcome, however much... First of all, that's rude. I'm trying to. I'm yes, trying no, I to understand that. It. I don't mean to say you want it to be, but it, it just, it's the way technology, the internet yeah. works. Yeah. Uh, it's, I'm not very Google friendly and we're trying to change that. Uh, the first thing, one of the first things that comes up is the site that I do not own or control, but where the homepage is written in first person, like I am the one running mm. it. Um, and on my Wikipedia, it's posted as my official website. And we've tried countless times to get it taken down including taking legal action, but the company will have, they won't hear anything. And we've made them countless offers. Let's go through this step by step. How did a girl who was brought by her parents to the United States from Lebanon, your home country, schooled in the United States, clearly smart, went to university in Texas, read history. How did you get involved with the sex porn industry? I don't think low self-esteem discriminates against anyone. It doesn't matter if you come from a great family or if you come from a not so great background. Uh, I struggled my entire childhood with weight and I never felt attractive or worthy of male attention. And suddenly my first year of college, I start losing all this weight from making small changes. And mm. by the time I graduated, I was ready to make a bigger difference. I felt extremely self-conscious about my breasts because that was the first thing to go when I lost all the weight. I lost about 50 pounds. I don't know how many kilos that is, or stones. Um, well, it's a, it's a considerable amount of weight. Yeah. It I, changed your oh, body, yeah. it changed you physically. Completely. Yeah. So my biggest insecurity was my breasts. So I wanted to more or less go back to what they normally were. And once I did that, I started garnering all of this attention from men and I was never used to it. And I felt like unless I held on to it and kind of did what was asked of me or what was expected of me, it would go away. And after feeling what it was like, that validation and you know the compliments for the first time, I did not want that to go away. Mm. You were spotted, I think, on mm -hmm. a street. I mean, there you were, you were a young graduate wanting to sort of find a job and, and you were spotted on a street by a guy who said, I, I, I can work with you. Uh, and clearly he 
opened up and said, it, it, it's the porn business. What was it in you that, that from far from running away, was, was drawn into it? Um, I, it wasn't, it, that's not how it was. It wasn't just, hey, do you want to come do porn? It was more so, oh, you're beautiful. Like, would you like to do some modeling? Oh, uh, you know, you have a great body. Like, I think you'd be great in nude modeling, mm. uh, things like that. And after I came and toured the studio, you know, it was very respectable. It was a gorgeous location. It was uh, in Miami, in Doral, Florida. Um, it was clean. Everyone who worked there was nice. All of their cubicles were decorated with family photos. Like it was nothing dodgy or that made me uncomfortable. And after do like it, the first time I went in wasn't the first time I I filmed a porn movie. Um, mm. It was the second time. Uh, the first time was more so. Do you want to do this? Like sign the paperwork, et cetera, et cetera. You um, have since talked about people who prey on callow young women. I'm just wondering, as we talk about it now, whether you, you, you feel a sense of victimhood, whether you look back at your younger self, because obviously now you're 26, but this is when you were 21. Do you look at that 21-year-old and feel that she was used, she was very much a victim? I feel like she didn't have the tools to identify that she was being taken advantage of and that what she was told what, what she was being told was lies um, maybe not so much lies but you know trying to manipulate me mm -hmm. to doing what they wanted me to do um, I don't really see myself as a victim I, I don't like that word I I did make my own decisions even though they were terrible decisions um, I think that I think that something needs to change in the way women are approached if even they are approached it is an industry and it is a multi-billion dollar industry, but at the heart of it are young people, and it, men and women, who are asked to and agree to perform sex acts in, in front of a camera. How much control, agency, did you have in the process of making those videos, which we now know have been viewed hundreds of billions of times? None, very little other than kind of saying yes, no to one outfit or the other. Uh, very little say on what was filmed, uh, the theme of it, the content, where it's filmed. Uh, it's not really up but, to you. But obviously consent would seem to yes. me as an outsider to be a fundamentally yes. important principle. If they asked you to perform a particular kind of sex act that you absolutely did not want to do... No, what, they what? can't force you. No. No, absolutely not. You've talked interestingly in the recent past about the mindset you had when you were performing in, in the sex videos. You said that you sort of blacked out and that now you look back, you can't actually remember very clearly a lot of the things you, you did. Do you, uh, try and explain to me what, what was going on in your head as you, as you got deeper into this industry. Uh, I think that the word I couldn't quite grasp when I said that was, uh, would be adrenaline. I think my adrenaline was so high because what I knew what I was doing was beyond anything that I ever thought that I would do or anything that I could have imagined doing. Um, so adrenaline was through the roof, made, makes it hard to look back and remember exactly what happened and uh, the things that transpired. Do you, do you find it difficult talking about it now? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, no, I understand that. And, and obviously, I mean, do you think it made a difference? I, I, I'm genuinely just asking that you, you know, you, you're of Arab heritage. Mm -hmm. Your parents were from Lebanon. I'm from Lebanon. I was born and raised there. Exactly. Uh, you're Arab and, and Arab culture is deeply conservative on the whole. And do you think that was an extra layer that you had to peel away as you got involved in this business? Probably. I, I think a part of it was also rebellion and wanting to do something so out of bounds and <laughs> so out of character that I shocked even myself. And I guess this is a very stupid question, but of course your family had no clue as to what you were doing. No, and they disowned me when they did, when they found out. Did they? Yes. That must have been terribly hard. It was. I felt completely alienated by not just the world, but my family and the people around me. Um, so it was especially after I quit, when I was still alone, even though I left. Um, and I, I mean, I just realized some mistakes aren't forgivable, but time heals all wounds and things are getting better now. Things are changing. Yes. 
I want to ask you about the mechanics of the industry in one other way, and that is power, authority, money. First of all, we've talked, obviously men and women are performers in this business, but, but were there any women in positions of authority and control that yeah, you worked with? Absolutely. One of the closest people I, that the talents work with mm. was a female. Mm. Um, she was very nice, respectful, uh, professional. Um, a lot of female uh, employees in you know the back office, like VPs of sales and people on the tech side. So the offices are filled with women. And I've, I asked her, I'm like, how, how, how did you find this job? Like, how do you apply for a job like this? The word of mouth through a friend. Mm. The financial side of it is extraordinary too. You, after you made the video that I want to talk about in a moment, which involved you wearing the Islamic dress, the hijab, you, for a, a time, were the number one most popular porn actress on uh, Pornhub, which is this aggregator site that, for porn that you know is wildly popular throughout the world, it seems. And mm -hmm. you were getting hundreds of millions of views. And yet, despite that, in the porn world stardom, you were paid a grand total for all the 12 sex videos you made, you were paid a grand total of 12,000 US dollars. And yet you made millions and millions of dollars for both Bang Bros, the company that you worked with, and Pornhub, the aggregating site. How could that be? That's just how it is. I'm not the only one who was singled out by this. It's not like I had a terrible contract or a terrible manager. Not that I, I didn't have a manager or an agent. At all? No. No advisors, uh, nothing at no. all? No. And, and you were 21, you were barely out of childhood, frankly. Yeah. I, no, I mean, the human brain doesn't fully develop until the age of yeah. 25. So like my decision-making part of my brain still yeah. needed forming. Um, there was no one to tell me what to do but the, the, or this to is say important this is wrong. about the nature of the porn business because you make a video, it lives forever online. And the more popular it gets, the more hits it gets. And we're not just talking about the United States. It's many of your videos, were, it seems very popular in the Middle East. The most which, popular in the Middle East. Which is interesting in itself. Because they're but, the ones who are tweeting death threats at me. Exactly. We'll get to that in just a moment. But the point of the finances is, however popular you became, the number one star in this business, you had no residuals, no rights whatsoever to get any sort of recompense for your popularity. None. None whatsoever. And, and is that, to this very day, is that the way porn contracts work? Absolutely. For everybody. Everyone. Male, female, everyone who comes in. Now, I think we have to get to this one particular, I mentioned at the beginning, the notorious video you were involved in, which, which actually involved three young people. You were one of them, and you were wearing the Islamic headscarf, often known as hijab. And, of course, then it developed into a sort of a sex scene. You must have known how provocative that was. I verbatim told them, you guys are going to get me killed. And they said... They just laughed. Why didn't you then say, I'm not doing it? Intimidation. I was scared. But I, I, I knew that if I said no, it would, it would, you know, they're not, you can, they, they're not going to force you to do it. That's, at that point, that's rape. No one's going to force mm. you to have sex. Um, but I was still scared. I mean, I, have you ever felt scared to, not scared, but nervous to speak up and say something at a restaurant when your food's not right and the waiter comes by and says, how is everything? I, I was intimidated. I was nervous. What you are saying is that the concept of consent is sort of meaningless in the power dynamic between the men, mostly, who are controlling the porn industry and a young 21-year-old actress such as yourself. Absolutely. When there's four white male producers in the room and you say something like that to them and they all just laugh, I mean, it's kind of devastating and it makes you not want to speak up and say anything again. It's the same with when you sign your contracts. You have, you know, the president and the CEO of the company sitting in the room with you waiting for you to read it. And when you're reading it, you're not comprehending anything that's written because you're so nervous because people are staring at mm. you. When you walked out of that um, filming area at the end of that particular video uh, film, did you in your heart know this is going to be a disaster for me? It didn't hit until I think the next day because 
the adrenaline was still very high, um, but immediately after it was released, it was, it shattered my entire world. Uh, the reason I thought it was okay for me to do porn was because I thought no one would ever find out about it. There's millions of girls who film themselves having sex and uh, do things like that, and no one knows their name. No one knows who they are. No one recognizes them. So I wanted to do it as my dirty little secret, but it blew up in my face. It really did. I mean, from the point of view of the of the filmmakers and and the aggregators, it was a triumph. You know, they got hundreds oh, yeah. of millions of views straight away. They called me lightning in a bottle. Yeah, but the reality for you was that your face was now known throughout the world as the porn star who wore hijab. Yeah. And you got threats. Oh, yeah. From, but, I'm not going to say ISIS because I don't think anyone heavily involved in ISIS has a Twitter account. But people proclaiming support for Absolutely, ISIS. yeah. They photoshopped a picture of me uh, onto someone getting beheaded and they said, I don't know exactly what they said. They said something along the lines of, uh, you're next. I cannot imagine how alone you must have felt at that point. Because you couldn't discuss this with your family. Of course you couldn't. No, no, it was terrifying. But my, co my coping mechanism is humor. So my response was, well, as long as you don't cut off my boobs, they were expensive. <laughs> but you're 21 years old. You just said to me that was when my life was sort of ruined. but. Here you sit, we are five years later. How much personal responsibility do you feel you have to take for what you did? 100%. I made the decision. Granted, there, the industry is flawed and you know we need to do something to protect other girls from falling into the same trap that I did, but at the end of the day, it was my choice. In, in terms of, of getting out of the business, when that went viral, that video, and your face was just so well known and associated with something so provocative and you were receiving the threats, was it a very quick decision for you to say no more? Uh, I wouldn't say very quick because I was still nervous. I didn't know whether, I, I, I didn't know how they would react to it. Um, I actually called them all in to a meeting about a month later and sat them down and I had a resignation letter waiting in front of every single one of their chairs and I spoke to them about my feelings and they tried to convince me to stay and they told me this will all blow over and that I'm, I'm overreacting and I'm exaggerating about the uh, level of peril that I'm in. Uh, At that point, did you have to have some sort of security? Had you had to move out of your own apartment? I did move out of my apartment already, but that was because someone had taken a screenshot of a Google Maps mm. location of where my apartment was. So these guys, they just saw you, frankly, as a money machine. Absolutely. But you still had no advisors, you had no lawyer, you had no nothing. So I I, was 20, What 21-year-old has a lawyer on retainer? I, I, I'm just trying to get my head around how stressful this must have been and whether even now, because you sit here so poised and obviously a lot of time has passed and you've moved on, but do you think there is some sort of post-traumatic stress that is in you from this experience? Yes, and uh, I think it kicks in mostly when I go out in public because the stares I get, I feel like people can see through my clothes and it brings me deep shame. It, it makes me feel like... It makes me feel like uh, I lost all right to my privacy, which I did because I'm one Google search away. Yeah. And it, those images, you cannot expunge. No. You have no right, even though it is deeply personal to you, you have no right to, to remove them from anybody's view around the world. Yeah. It is very hard. It is. And I'm just thinking, this isn't... I mean, this story is your story, but frankly, it, it's also the story of other porn actors and actresses. I honestly started seeing that recently after the interview came out and people started reaching out and uh, all of the emails go, my, my manager checks them. And when he gets stuff like that, he filters them and sends them to me. And reading the words of some of these girls who have been sex trafficked and forced into porn and all of these stories of girls whose lives have been ruined by it and by men who have taken advantage of them and by contracts that they didn't even, didn't even understand the jargon of, it, it makes me feel like, okay, maybe 
maybe it was good that I started talking and that right. I posted this interview and that I'm speaking out now because other people feel the same way. And even if they don't relate on a, as deep a level as you know doing porn, they can relate on the level of being insecure and being pressured into doing something right. they didn't want to do. You have chosen to speak out in a way that very few people in the porn industry ever do for, for all sorts of reasons, which I guess many of them are fairly obvious. But you've got a platform now in a way because you've leveraged what was, if we could say it, notoriety into, into a different form of fame. You're trying to move into different businesses as well. But in terms of looking back and wanting now to be a, a sort of campaigner and activist, if you do, is it part of your mission to change the way society sees pornography and deals with it and treats people in that industry? I mean, everyone watches porn. Have you ever watched porn in your entire life? In my entire life, I have watched porn. See, I think what needs to change is the way women are brought into porn, whether, you know, change being allowed to approach them, uh, make it so that only women can seek, can seek it instead of being uh, kind of pressured into it or make it so you can't force them to sign a contract right in front of you, right there on the spot. They, it has to be looked over by a lawyer, and you know if that's too extreme, maybe even they have to take a few days to think about it and read it over at home on their own time before they sign it. But it, it, we interview a lot of people, and many of them are middle-aged or older. It's great to have somebody in the studio who's only 26 years old. There is a, a school of thought which says that, that our culture as a whole, I'm not just talking about the United States or the UK, but in many, many countries, is being pornified. And that young people in particular are so exposed to pornography, so young in their lives, that it's, it's materially changing the way males and females relate to each other, the way they think about relationships in, in a potentially very corrosive, damaging way. What's your take on that? Of course it affects relationships. I mean, porn addiction is very prevalent in America, and I'm sure here too. Uh, the things that men see in videos, they expect from the women in their lives, and that's just not reality. No one is going to be that perfect. No one is going to do those acts on a Wednesday night with the person they love. Mm. We've talked a lot, and I know it's been difficult for you, obviously it's difficult for you to accept that, you know, still online there are so many images of you engaged in, in your brief porn career. But has it proved possible for you to move on from that, to forge a different kind of career, and indeed to forge you know, relationships with people far beyond the notion that you were once involved in, in porn? Yeah, I was very lucky to meet a man who had never even heard of me, <laughs> which was fantastic. Uh, I ended up having to tell him about it, but right. then he told me after we started talking, I Googled you because you have five million followers and I'd be crazy not to Google you. Um, but it's, it was very hard for me to date after. And I don't think it was hard for me to date because it was hard to find a man. It was hard to find somebody who wasn't into it. Do you, yeah, does yeah. that make sense? It does make sense. So I suppose the bottom line is you, you never really wanted to be famous when you were a porn star. It was the last thing you wanted. You wanted it to be a secret. But no. now it seems you're embracing being famous. Yeah, uh, and I get a lot of hate from female performers who say that I'm ungrateful for it, but it was never what I asked for. Mm. And if you could speak to that 21-year-old Mia Khalifa walking down the street in Florida, by, stopped by the guy who said, you're beautiful, you're lovely, I can work with you, what would you tell her to do today? There's mace in your purse for a reason. Use it. Run. Mia Khalifa, it's been a pleasure having you on Hard Talk. Thank you Thanks very much. Thanks for having me.